Hey guys, we're going to set up a tuning for an R34 Skyline with a HPX airflow meter today. So if you haven't already, make sure you select your vehicle. So go to the file, select vehicle, and select the vehicle from the list. In this case, R34 Skyline, and we click OK. Next, click on the console button to connect to the vehicle. And this has now picked up the vehicle being a feature pack. It's displayed a list of registers. Make sure that your TP and your RPM are selected when connecting to the vehicle. This ensures that you've got the correct map tracing working. Once you've connected, hit the download button to get the maps off the ECU. Okay, the uh, default airflow meter is an R34, as we can see here. Under operations and change math, it'll tell you what the current airflow meter is, and it'll give you a list of options to choose new airflow meters. So in here, we do have the HPX um, original airflow meters, as well as the N1, which is the newer model uh, in a three inch tube. As you can see, um, these airflow meters, from what we've worked out on the dyno, can measure a crap load of airflow. The application, uh, this particular vehicle is about 300 kilowatts at the wheels, so um, yeah, we're not even going to get close to that, so there's a different way of resizing for HPX, um, which is the point of this exercise today. So we're going to get out of doing this normal way of changing airflow meters and uh, do it manually. So what we need to do is go to display and then VQ transfer generator. And that displays a window like this. It gives you a list of the most common slot style airflow sensors, um, as well as you can create your own under user one. In this window, you can input the tube diameter, three and three and a half inch, etc. So you can place the airflow sensor before the turbo or after the turbo. The VQ multiplier is just a scaling used, uh, and that's dependent on which airflow meter that you select. The load scaling we'll go into in a moment. So with the generator, what we're going to do next is uh, have a look at the MAF translation curve, uh, what's called the VQ MAP voltage quantifier, which is uh, the reference that Nissan gave this curve when uh, developing these ECUs. Right, so we have voltage across the bottom, and we have the load scaling across the top. So, as you can see here, at 5 volts, that's when we reach the maximum load that this airflow meter can read. So, at the moment, we're looking at the map for the R34 airflow meter. What we're going to do now is we're going to click on the HPX N1 and click Apply for a 3-inch tube, which is where the sensor is installed. There's a slight change to the curve. If we want to have a look at how it looks in relation to the original airflow meter curve, we'll go into Nistune, have a look under the ROM pack, and load up the original R34. Uh, this one uses feature pack, so we're looking at the feature pack maps. What we do next is we'll click on the compare button to see the difference between the maps. So you can see the curve there, the purple curve is the original R34 airflow meter, meanwhile the HPX is the red one here which we've got highlighted. Now as the vehicle isn't going to be measuring this much airflow using the HPX which is around the 1600 horsepower mark, we're going to pull back the load scaling. Now the load scaling that I used on my S14 was around the 30% mark so we're going to use about the 40% mark just to get this vehicle started. So we turn in 40%, we hit apply. What we see here is the curve has been brought back. Now what we're going to do is upload that to the ECU. Okay, so that's been uploaded, everything's synchronized. Now what I need to do is I need to set up my wideband because uh, I switch between various wideband units and COM ports, etc. So we're going to go into File and Configuration and then just select the, the wideband. So uh, this particular vehicle is using the Innovate, and that's on COM9. So we click OK, and click on the wideband. Now we can see our wideband is connected. 
what we're going to open up next is the multipliers. Now, there's two multipliers that are in the feature pack ECUs, uh, whereas previously there only used to be the one, which was the K constant. The K constant is a load multiplier as well as a injection multiplier in that when you adjust the load, it also adjusts the amount of fueling. We added a new parameter called total injection multiplier, which is this next one here, which we're opening up. The total injection multiplier starts at a base of 512, which is uh, a default value we've assigned to it. You adjust this value by a percentage in order to either make the total tune richer or leaner. It allows you to adjust the fueling in the tune without affect the loading, whereas when you adjust the K constant, it affects the load uh, used by the ECU. The reason why we do this is in the fuel and the timing maps, we have a load scale. This one you can see starts from 24 and goes to 160. Uh, we have basically, as you can see, done not much change to the fueling with this vehicle. We've put a bit out the top end uh, compared to the stock vehicle, which has been compared against. You can also change the uh, highlighting from shaded to just pink and green, just to make it a bit easier to look at. All right, so our loading goes from 24 to 160. When we change the airflow meters, they measure different loads. So with a higher flowing airflow meter, the load gets increased by K constant and the load will effectively run off the scale. Now with the total injection multiplier, we can keep the existing load scales as they are and use the total injection multiplier to adjust for the feeling. So what we're going to do at the moment is uh, we're going to try and start the vehicle and we'll keep on mucking around with the total injection multiplier till we get the car running and then we'll adjust the scaling afterwards to get it running within the expected range. So, we've now restarted the vehicle, we can see that the wideband's connect is running a bit rich. So we can pull back the total injection multiplier, but we've also got to remember that the vehicle's also cold. So, normally with the vehicle, when you first start it, it needs to run rich until it's up to the expected call and temperature. So, we're going to skip forward in a sec until the vehicle's at the correct temperature. Hey guys, so we've just come back from a run. We can see the car's got pretty hot, 99 degrees while it's been sitting here. Now, you also need to look at the trims. We've had 28% of fuel pulled out, 18% uh, on the short term and 10% on the long term. So it means that our tune is running a bit too rich when it's in closed loop mode. So what we can do is, is two things. We can adjust the total injection multiplier to adjust adjust the fueling and that's it. However, we also need to keep track of uh, where our load is at the moment in regards to the fuel map. So, uh, what we do is have a look at the fuel map and what we'll normally do is we'll do a power run when we're on the dyno. During this recording session, we're just uh, you know on the street so we can't do the full boost. So, what normally happens is when we rev the engine, we'll see a trail. So, we're just gonna click the trail button. That'll turn into a single cursor. And we can see where we've ripped the car, it's gone up to 96 load. So we can see from the trace here that we went across to 96 just uh, doing a free rev. Uh, in a dyno situation, we would want to see the trace go across to the second last two columns. Some tuners will add in an extra amount of protection by adding more fuel in the very last column and then tune up to the second last column. In this case, we can see where the load index goes up to 144. While doing that, we want to also have a look at the VQ map. So we're going to have kind of a busy screen here because we're going to be looking at how far the load reads up to and how far across we're going in our fuel map. If we're not going far enough, we're going to need to increase the load scaling further. So what we're going to do for now is we're going to pull the load scaling back to about 45% for this vehicle. and then fix up the injection. 
So just watching it, it's a little bit too rich at the moment, so I will add pull some fuel out and get that about right. What you can do as well is we'll close the map down for the fuel and we'll open up the AFR inputs tracer. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the current sensor, which is the O2 feedback. We can look at a lambda, or we can look at AFRs. We're going to look at AFRs just because it's easier. I'm not running E85 at the moment. And we can do a trace. You can use this to get an idea of where your AFRs are sitting during your dyno run. As well as any driving that you may do or log, you can look at it afterwards in this. So it's sitting around 14s at the moment, seems to be okay. We'll have a look at our trims. The trims have uh, kind of correct themselves, they've started to get close towards zero. And you get around zero, one, two percent, then you're looking okay. So that concludes uh, the R34 ECU, just basic dialing of the airflow meter. So you just basically adjust the load scaling until you've got the cursor going right across the fuel map. If it goes too far across and goes up the edge, then you need to scale it back. You basically want to get this load scaling to the load that the vehicle's capable of, uh, rather than what the airflow sensor can measure. Alright, thanks guys.